what was your worst injury? Actually, for me and Kim, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Shanti, I'm in track and field and I've been doing the sport for about... What's 25 minus 9? <laughs> 14 years. I've been doing it for 14 years. I do the 1 and 200 meters. How I started was, um, I basically ran my sports day and the coach just selected me and asked me to join the track and field team <laughs> and then it was history from there. Hi everybody, I'm Cecilia and I'm a sailor. I sell the 49er FX and I've been doing the sport for about 22 years. I think my mom just put me and my sister into sports. She saw like some flyer. So I think that's how we started. Are you guys anticipating anything or worried about any questions that you might ask? I don't know. Should I be worried? Yeah, <laughs> should we? <laughs> uh, I think we're excited. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> to start the game, each player will draw five question cards from the deck. Players will take turns choosing a question card from their hand to ask the opponent. Players will also be given three action cards each where they can skip, swap or switch at any point of time. For skip, you can skip the question. Swap, you can swap the cards with your opponent. And switch, get your opponent to answer anything. Oh my lord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, some difficult questions I need to, though. I need to think about this. But oh. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, yeah, I'll go first. As in, I'll ask you first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a fun fact about the Olympics that only Olympians know about. Because the sailors are in a satellite village, so basically we have a hotel, and then we can only go from the hotel to the marina. So the only freedom we get is in the marina where we can walk around, because the, the marina is quite big. So a lot of yeah. people ask me about one thing, whether I could explore Tokyo, and two, about the cardboard bits. <laughs> I didn't get the cardboard really? bits. Really? Yeah. Everybody asked me like, oh, so is it really cardboard bits? I was like, yeah, it is. Then it's like, how? Can you sleep? Like, I can sleep. It's just a frame. Like, the mattress is not <laughs> cardboard. <laughs> you know? Yeah. How does someone become a professional at their sport? It's really just like, pure competitions, I guess. Like, you just go and compete. For me, I mean, it was a typical route, like I went Sea Games and then I went Asian Games and then I went Commonwealth Games, like typical and then I went Olympics, so I was like, so I think that's the typical route. I think um, it's great if you have the CCA in your school, like that's how I started. I think the sailors are a bit different because we kind of need to kind of start like from young. Yeah, yeah the sailors really nice. all start like with a class that is below 15. So basically we build up from there, like we do under 15, then under 18 and then you start going to the Olympic class. What is your day-to-day -day routine like when you were training for the Olympics? So basically, Monday to Sunday, it doesn't make a difference. There's no such <laughs> thing as a day, so you just forget about the day. Like, you just wake up, I would have at least two sessions a day. So either sailing, gym or cardio. For sailing, we usually do by blocks. So we do by maybe blocks of 10, 10 days straight. And then we have maybe three days or break or maybe a week. But the break is not just like, oh, I can just chill. Mm. It's more like, like, yeah, it's stuff. break from sailing. What were you like as a kid? <laughs> were you sporty all your life? <laughs> I think I was. According to my parents, they said like, I kept running around all the time and that I could walk at a very early age. So it's like, oh my God, these are telltale signs, you know, that I'm gonna be a sprinter. I was like, okay, sure. And I was like, I was picked as junior sports leader, if that's a thing in primary school. Mm -hmm. It's a thing in my school, so I was picked for that, so yeah. <laughs> was being an Olympian a lifelong dream? I would have to say yes. <laughs> I mean, when you just started, you don't really know about it. But once you start competing and then you keep looking forward to the next big competition and, and then you see every time you watch on TV and you're like, oh, Olympics. And everybody's like so tuned in and it's such a great event. So as a kid, it's just like, I always watch the Olympics. I was like, that's gonna be me. Aww. And it was. <laughs> Olympians have sacrificed their social life because of the vigorous training hours. Oh my gosh. Is yes. <laughs> <laughs> true. 125% true. For me, like my training is usually like from 5 and it lasts maybe 2 or 3 hours. And by the time that ends, like if my friends want to go for dinner, I can't really make it in time. Whenever I want to meet my friends, it's like have to be planned way in advance just so we can like 
fit my training schedule a bit. I think she probably has a lot of experience on that because she's usually based overseas. Yeah. I just like, it was quite hard like to miss like people's weddings mm. and you know at the age where everybody's getting, getting married. married yeah. right. I don't think it would be a sacrifice. I think it's more like I chose to do this so this is the, That's true. This is the thing that I have to deal with. Do Singaporeans only support winners? Actually, I would say no. Like, not really. Obviously, when you win, you are recognised more, for sure. Because, just because you appear in like the newspapers, and yes. you appear everywhere, so people automatically know like, oh my god, this guy won. From my own experience, there's a lot of people out there who have truly supported my journey. Like, not just family, not just friends, but like, actual the actual public that has supported my journey. So like when I go to the market, like the people actually kind of know. They be like, oh, I saw you in the newspaper. And they like, they were like, good luck and do your best. And yeah, that kind of thing, which is quite nice. What was your worst injury? My worst injury, I would have to say, is a chronic um, compartment syndrome. Actually, I did a surgery for it. Yeah, like, really? yeah, look, I have a, like oh, a small, your arm. yeah, my arms, both sides. I have a scar here. It was like a build up and it's from gripping too much. Mm. So basically, um, I get cramps and um, like random, like my whole hand will turn white. Like it gets to a point where I actually can not grip and I'll just drop stuff. And it was like from the lead up towards the Olympics. So I actually had this during the Olympics. Oh, it was recent. Yeah, I sleep with a splint, so I s like both hands. You turn out to be an athlete because you were bad. Bad in your studies, not academically inclined. Huh? <laughs> false. <laughs> false. 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 Very, very false. That's not true. Yeah, there's a lot of... At least they're very smart. They're very smart. They are doing sports. <laughs> We're not dumb. Yeah. Oh my god, were you in KCP? Yeah. I knew Kim was in KCP, I didn't know you were in KCP. We were all from the same school. Oh my goodness, I didn't know that. Now we know. <laughs> okay, uh, true or false, every Olympian goes into the Olympics wanting to win. I think it's true. I'm sure everybody wants to win, but you kind of know. Yeah, you kind of know where you stand. And you usually set goals that are reachable or at least tough to obtain, but reachable. Actually, for me and Kim... Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. I was like, delayed reaction. I was like, I oh, shit. nobody knows this. <laughs> Oops. Uh, I would just speak for myself because it's my first Olympics. Went in with a goal. At least we made our goal, I would say, which is to get top 10 in the Olympics. Which, yeah, I think it's pretty, yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was she really, really good. Mm. Last question. Last question. It's a true or false question. Mm. All Olympians have an expiry date. <laughs> I wouldn't call it an expiry date, but... Unless you say expiry like we pass away. Yeah! Now, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Um, I wouldn't call it expiry date. <laughs> oh my god, stop. Okay, okay. wait. <laughs> Sorry. I think one's an Olympian, always an Olympian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, right, like, this passion will never die. Like, even when I am retired and I'm not running anymore, like, it will still be something that I always love to do. I know ultimately I have to stop. <laughs> so, like, at this point in time, I, I honestly don't know. Okay, I have the last one also. Okay, so who have been the most important people in your sporting journey? The very most important is family. I think without them, it's quite hard to, like, pursue sports. Yeah, in Singapore at least. But other than that, other than family, everything around us, the support that we've been given, MCCY, SSI, and everything Sport Singapore and all the other people that are surrounding us have been helping us a lot. Without them, I mean the Olympic journey would have been almost impossible. I think there are some like struggles that we actually have in common and probably all the athletes have in common. So it's quite nice to like know and to share what struggles we actually went through to the journey and like learn about each other different sports and see what challenges you face which was nice yeah. thank you for watching this episode of spill it oh. thank you for watching this episode of spill it <laughs> sorry <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry 
Thank you for watching this episode of Spill It. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe. See you. Bye.